is the inside of the little Davoli amp. And uh, first thing I want to do is to get some WD-40 into these pots, especially this one and this one. They don't turn well at all. This one is okay. <laughs> There's also this a voltage selector switch which has a maximum setting of 220 volts. This is a bit of a problem because it will make that the uh, B plus will be even higher than intended if I feed it to 30 volts. And here in Belgium we all we almost have like 239 or 238, so we'll have to look into that. The other settings are for 160 volts, 140 volts, 125 volts, 110 volts, 0 volts, and 280. So 220 is the best option. And as the speaker is hardwired to the output transformer, or at least to a tab which goes to the output transformer, I will have to desolder the leads to the speaker in order to be able to take the chassis out. And then we'll have to loosen these screws with yellow paint that apparently have never been removed. So I'm quite sure the chassis has never been removed from the amp. So let's do that. Okay, let's be smart and use gravity to avoid the loose solder from dripping into the, the speaker cone. Okay, success. It wasn't easy, mostly because of the stranded wire and the fact that uh, it's quite hard to reach into the chassis and uh, but it's all good well I measured about three ohms on the speaker so that would mean that it is probably a four ohm uh, speaker okay I'm now taking the screws out to remove the chassis and I think it's best to first remove the tubes RCA tube made in Italy and here are the power tubes, the beam pentos combined with one triode, ECL82, Philips mini watts. Well, yeah, incredibile madre madonna. It took me almost an hour to get uh, these screws out of the chassis, but uh, now it's coming apart. Oh. Let's have a looky looky. Output transformer is this side with the leads leading up to the speaker and the power transformer is here and visual inspection is all. 
I do tend to think I see some heat damage here on the bottom of the power transformer. Okay, I've measured some voltages across the amp, we will discuss this later, but uh, before anything else, uh, I've realized that the amp has been worked on before. Uh, these carbon film resistors are replacements, as is this filter cap, because there used to be a can capacitor standing upright on the chassis like this, exactly like the other one that's still in place, that one there. Uh, and that's been replaced by this capacitor. And I think these 10 uh, microfarad uh, bypass caps are also already replacements, as probably are. Titi, you're gonna get elect electrocuted, watch it. Um, but, these 2000 or 20,000 pico farad caps are the coupling caps leading into the power section. To the grids, they are uh, like here 20k and 20k, and they're still the originals. But before anything else, I want to try and hook up a decent speaker, a very good speaker. So I Hooked up, hooked up my uh, super reverb cabinet with it's got yeah it's got some mojo tones, and um, but the load is two ohms. That amp would like to see four ohms, but uh, yeah, if Skippy says it's okay, let's try it. Uh, I won't turn it up all the way, and it probably won't kill the speaker. Maybe I should kill you, hmm? Huh? Okay, I think I found the main problem. Um, it was this 330k resistor, which had solidified into some 5 meg resistor, and uh, it's still in circuit. But I bridged it with a 300k resistor, so to bring the resistance down a bit, and this immediately improved the sound. Um, let's see. It's going to ground anyway, you can hear. A whole lot of more headroom because this was pulling up the bias on the output tubes completely. All the measurements I took here was before I changed this resistor. Uh, but I only changed it temporarily, I have to get to the store. But uh, another thing I wanted to demonstrate is this amp has a two-prong cord. No death cap, so you can get zapped. If you want to check out what result will be installing a three prong cord, uh, just attach an alligator clip to the common ground and then run this alligator clip to the chassis. Less noise. So I guess we we'll, we will be installing this three prong cord after all. Okay, I was desoldering these uh, coupling caps and the coupling caps on these two resistors, and of course the tube tap broke off. So we will be replacing that tube socket and uh, redoing and the whole wiring. Hallelujah. Keeping most of the wiring in place to know where everything goes. And I'm gonna put in the other socket. Now uh, this coupling cap is gonna go as well, 10 nanos. But, uh, let's sally forth. <laughs> So we're not done yet, but I had to replace this tube socket uh, and completely redo the wiring on this one. So I changed out all the coupling caps 
these are the two coupling caps into the output tubes or the output stages and this is a coupling cap between uh, uh, the plate of the second stage and the phase inverter and the phase inverter is here so I will be changing the power cord but I want to get this amp up up and running first. Um, I will need to connect these two resistors to this point. And that's part of uh, the tremolo circuit. I might have to change the capacitors in the tremolo circuit as well. But um, let's wait with that until it's working again. The main problem I'm, I'm having right now is uh, filament wiring. Originally these very flimsy wires went through the rivets that we used to put in the tube sockets, but I have been I have been forced to use this to put in screws for the new socket, so I can't feed the filaments through there. Um, I'll have to find a solution, maybe lengthen them or redo the filament wiring. So, but it's a, it's been more work than I expected. I also replaced a, a cathode resistor here and the main one here, cap and a resistor behind it, two watts should suffice. So let's hook it up and fix the filament wiring and see if it still works and then try and troubleshoot the tremolo if it doesn't work already because um, these 33k resistors were completely shot, at least one was, and they are the ones here feeding into uh, 33k to ground on the grid of the, uh, of the output tubes here as well and these 33k mixing resistors which come from the tremolo circuit uh, but um, at least uh, resistors to ground were shot at least one was shot so that might fix the tremolo problem okay <clears throat> much too late to uh, really rock out but I'm so happy that uh, both tubes are burning and things working. Um, no tremolo yet, so we'll have to dig into these three capacitors and especially I think these two carbon comp resistors. These and. Uh, switch everything out but uh, everything is work working honky dory uh, I had to lead the filament wiring like this it won't be visible at all because this is the yeah this is it will be inside the amp okay for sure these uh, Screws have never been of these pots. I'm taking them off now so I can remove the pots and uh, we can have a, a look at the tremolo circuit and replace some of the capacitors. All three pots are removed now because otherwise there's no way of getting to the capacitors in the tremolo circuit. Uh, 17, 23, 29, 4. One six anyway we'll be cutting out this we'll be cutting out this capacitor first and then we'll proceed with the rest well the whole tremolo circuit has been replaced I have to Cut sh some of the leads a bit shorter, but uh, I 
Can you hear it? Can you hear it? This should be 10 microfarads. It's 32. So you probably don't need new capacitors, right? 80 nanofarad, while it should be only 47, probably. Let's have a look. 47. This 10 nanofarad cap is actually okay. 340 nanofarad. It should be expecting only 47 nanofarads. 20,000 pico is 20 nano. 50 is another 22 nano coupling cap. 100 nanos. No, it's a 500 nanos. There's this nice little retainer which I will use to uh, put in place the three prong as well as attach the ground lead to the chassis. Okay, the three prong is in. I also replaced the first dropping resistor that was this old big black guy for this new uh, ceramic 5 watt instead of 4 watts uh, resistor just to play it on the safe side. I've also decided to remove this mm, medium jack, very strange size, which is supposed to uh, ground the tremolo signal uh, if you want to use it with a pedal. We can always implement a pedal to turn it on and off, but I need a, a place to put a proper uh, input jack. And I'm gonna leave the uh, original microphone input does uh, but this hole is just a little bit too small to fit the jack so we'll have to trail I was hoping it would fit but no so that's what's gone input jack is in place and working fine but there is still uh, an acoustic problem could be worthwhile to take out the speaker and uh, reattach it to the baffle but closer inspection immediately reveals that it is probably not the original speaker there were some other uh, holes drilled and some of the speaker holes don't line up at all I put some paper as a temporary solution to fight the noise but uh, the speaker is a problem to itself
maybe we might replace it uh, take it out and see what damage has been done to the baffle or why it doesn't fit properly well let's just take out the speaker and inspect the baffle and make sure that rattling noise is not something that's going on that's that's loose out there so let's have a look It's actually very dirty, but it looks okay. A little closer inspection of the baffle uh, turned up that in fact the hole is cut a bit too wide um, to fit this exact speaker and as you can tell there has been another speaker installed with different holes um, so <laughs> we're gonna try and reattach it the way it was and hope we can just get rid of the raff of the rattle which is ex kind of normal if it's not attached. It was only attached here and here, and then only with a clip here. But I found some extra screws, and uh, maybe we can put these in and see if it helps. <laughs> This was a jack that came with the amp, with the microphone connector, but it's always failing, so redo it. Okay. I just wanted to show this jack, which I thought was completely broke, but it wasn't. It was just, it has a screw on the top, and that screw was loose. I was able to tighten it, and now it's perfectly okay, so I can reuse it. Nice piece of 60s quality. I really have to check <clears throat> which side of the speaker is positive and which is negative and there's an easy way to do it just hook up an alligator clip to a 9 volt battery and this is even an old one so I've got the lead to the negative pole of the battery and I'm gonna touch with the positive lead to the other side the other tab and if everything is okay if the alligator lead is really on the negative and the one I'm touching is really the positive pole, then the speaker will move out. Phew. Yeah. Time for a cigarette break. Um, I think it's ready to be mounted back into the cabinet. But at least I can immediately hook up another speaker to test it because I am still having my doubts about this speaker and it would be nice if we would, would be able to upgrade it to um, a decent Celestion you know, champ type speaker um, but as for now I can't even put extra screws in because as I told you 
the the, the cutout is just a little too big. I also have to check whether any other upgraded speakers will fit the cabinet and will fit in with the amp. So, But it's ready to rock. Chassis is back in the cabinet, but I haven't been able to fix the problem with the speaker, which is certainly due to the fact that it's not attached properly and there's no way of quickly throwing some screws in. Um, but we can always detach the speaker and uh, run another speaker through it. And that's why I put in this connector here. So let's button it up. Mm -hmm. 